Today we're going to be learning about seeds and plants. We might even collect some seeds today. So let's go to the Fort Ord National Monument. So everyone loves spring, a time when flowers are blooming and looking their best. Many animals rely on those flowers for food, bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds, just to name a few. But what about fall? Fall is when the days grow shorter and the weather's a little bit cooler. Fall is after the flowers have bloomed and many of the plants are looking dry and brown. It's still an important time in the life of a plant. After the blooms come the seeds. We need those seeds so that we can have more plants. Now you may wonder, why do we need plants? So plants help people and animals in many ways. The plants help give us oxygen. They provide homes for animals and for people because we use the, the plants for building products, hiding places for animals, food for both people and animals, and then the roots of plants help to hold the soil in place. You also might be wondering, how do these seeds get to all the different places where we find plants? Well, some seeds travel on wind, some are sticky, some have stickers, and then some can travel on water, or even animals might eat them and be sloppy eaters or poop them out later. And here at Fort Ord, we collect seeds from native plants in the fall. We use them to replant areas that have been changed by people over time. So let's go talk to botanist Bruce and see what he's up to today. Today, I'm working with botanist Bruce. A botanist is a plant specialist. They know all about plants. Hi, I'm botanist Bruce, and I'm out collecting seeds from this native plant called yellow bush lupin. Native plants are plants that have been here before people were ever here. And the reason that we collect seeds from native plants is so that we can grow plants from those seeds that will help Fort Ord's natural habitats. Look, Ranger Tammy, here's the fruit from the yellow bush lupin. And if we open it up and take out the seeds, then we can use those seeds to grow yellow bush lupin plants. Wow, that's really cool. These are kind of large seeds, but that will make a very beautiful native plant. Thank you, Bruce, for teaching us about seeds today. Thank you, Ranger Tammy. So this is coyote brush. It is a native plant to our area, and we're gonna be collecting seeds. So the seeds are these white fluffy things. Not all of the seeds are ready for collection. The ones that are, are the really fluffy ones. And you can see right here, they are very fluffy and light. And when these seeds travel, they travel on air, or they can travel by sticking to animal fur or clothing on other people. So I'll get busy collecting my coyote brush seeds. So now we're gonna be collecting the seeds from telegraph weed. And as you can see, all these little puff balls are full of seeds. So the seeds can be light and airy and float on the wind. Or just like the coyote brush, it can also stick to your clothes or to animals fur. Hi everyone. I'm standing underneath a coast live oak. We call them coast live oaks because the leaves stay green all year. We're gonna be collecting the seeds. Now the seeds from the coast live oak are acorns. Lots of animals like to eat acorns. So you can see that the acorn has a little hat on the top of it. And that hat is what connects it to the tree. When they are ready to be collected, they are typically found around the bottom of the tree. So we're just gonna start looking around and see how many acorns we can find. Black sage, another native here at Fort Ord. I love the way the nice green leaves smell so fresh. Wonderful. 
The pom-poms that used to be white flowers are now the holders of the seeds. In order to collect them, all you have to do is tap the pom-poms on your hand. The seeds come out and you have little tiny seeds. Now the way these seeds travel, there's multiple ways. Animals can eat them. They can be sloppy eaters or they can poop them out later or these seeds are so small that the wind can actually carry them. So now we're gonna be collecting the seeds from white yarrow. So this is really easy. You just take some of these dried blooms and we're gonna collect the whole bloom. And then later in the greenhouse, they will squish these up and separate the seeds from the blooms. And then that's what we will be planting is just the seeds. Sticky monkey flower, what a great name for a plant, right? So another native here at Fort Ord, we're gonna collect some seeds. This one's a little bit different. So what you do is you find the dried blooms, pull them off, and then you have to peel back the bloom to find the seed pod. And the seed pod is actually pretty big, but the seeds are inside. So if you crack that open, the seeds are super, 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 super tiny. And they can be carried on the wind, but also the blooms are sticky. So it sticks to animals fur and people's clothing and they can get spread all over and we end up with lots of sticky monkey flower. Today, we're gonna to be working with Chris and we're gonna be collecting two different types of grass seed. One of them will be the California state grass, purple needle grass. So let's talk to Chris and see what other types of grass seed we'll be collecting today. Hi everyone, my name is Chris Hart. I'm a biological science technician for the Bureau of Land Management and I specialize in plants. Today we're going to be collecting some blue wild rye seed. Blue wild rye is a native perennial grass and it grows all over the grasslands of Fort Ord. So to collect the seed, I'm just going to pull on the plant until I get some nice seed in my hands. Now I'm going to show you what the seed looks like. And there's your wonderful blue wild dried seed. So Chris, how do these seeds get all over Fort Ord? They primarily spread either through the wind or through animals getting them in their fur, or even if people walk through and get them in their socks. Wow, so these are kind of pokey. And I could see how they would stick in your socks or in fur. Now we're gonna collect purple needle grass seed. Purple needle grass is the California state grass. It can have a root system up to 15 to 20 feet deep to hold in soil and it can live for 100 to 200 years old. To collect the seed, it's very similar to the blue wild rye. We're just gonna pull on the seed and pull up vertically. And then what you get is a little pile of seed in your hand, just like that. So Chris, how do these seeds end up all over Fort Ord? As the name would suggest, it's needly and pokey, so it's spread through animals fur or through people's socks, similar to the blue wild rye. Wow. So I can see how the little seeds have some twisty things on it, and that would definitely stick in a sock. So thank you, Chris. I'm gonna leave you to your seed collection. Yeah, thank you, Ranger Tammy. So I hope that everyone learned a little bit about seeds, how seeds travel, how we collect seeds and why, plants, why they're important to people and to animals. So until next time, see you.